All right. So we went through how to find your physical dimensions, your resolution, and how to determine what that resolution is good for, either for screen or for print. The last requirement of this proving ground, and remember this is only worth one and a half points in a class of 100 points, but by getting full marks on all of these, being really like paying attention to the details, means that you'll get that, that creative problem solving digital badge at the end of the semester. But we need to frame novel problems in familiar terms. We have to explain how our creature is intended to interact with its environment, accounting for atmospheric and practical concerns. For example, how does your creature breathe, shelter, and eat in this environment? So this is where you're just making stuff up, but by making the stuff up, just like if you were filling out a character sheet for a role-playing game, you have to start making connections in ways that make sense to you. So taking the novelty and framing it in familiar terms. And what I'm going to do is just write, this will be rubric requirement number three. You don't need to write that. You just need to make sure you have, have the requirement in there. I need to look at my creature, look at this setting and then think about how they connect, how they're related. And that might even give me ideas for our next assignment. So I called this the zipper. So the zipper rumpa zoo. So that's what I'm gonna name my creature. It's more like a species. I'm going to say it's very seldom seen and spends most of its existence in deep hiding. It can survive for long periods without food because it keeps its metabolism at the slowest rate of any creature in the ecosystem. I don't need you to understand all the aspects of biology. I just want you to come to terms with how it lives in this environment and why. You, might, you can't even use the passive voice, which is the big cop-out in concepts, but they're fun. So you can say, some say <laughs> that this is only possible because of the symbiotic relationship it shares with the blue, what do I want to call them? Um, viva, which is life, viva cutaneous, which is under the skin, crystals, that it seems to prefer as a feature of its habitat. Now I ask you to write a paragraph, so more than one sentence, you know, three or four sentences. So I talked a little bit about how it survives. It hides when it feeds. It prefers leafy greens. And you can tell the maturity of a specimen by the length 
of its bushy whiskers. Both male and female Well, I won't even put that. It's bushy whiskers. I can even acknowledge things that aren't known. It is unknown how they breed or even if there exists variations in gender. It has only ever been seen at night, possibly just after you've closed your eyes. All right. So does that talk about the relationship between the creature and its environment? You can pick your different ways. I think that does. I could say something about its its large eyes are adapted to seeing in the dark. You know, I could just find lots of ways to make its connections. But that's going to meet that third requirement. It might even give you ideas for how to animate that creature in that environment. So now I have met all three of the rubric requirements to the full extent. And so now I am done with the proving ground. And I want to make sure I save that work in my folder in an organized way under proving ground number one. So how can I save this other stuff that I wrote under it? Because that's not in the PSD file. What I can do is zoom in on it, these parts, and then just do a screen grab on a Mac that's Command-Shift-4 for a targeted screen grab. And then move that into my folder. All right, and once I'm done, I'll mark it green. And I'm ready for the next assignment.